Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Let me turn that down. Still getting a lot of noise. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Hey, some familiar faces. XD, hey, how's it going? Uh, we got Gil Baroto, good to see you. Uh, Blueprints for Headaches, good to see you again. We got Lucas as well. Owen, good to see you all again. Kudo, hey, good to see you again as well. Hey, got a bowl of soup. Sup, bruv. How's it going? Is um ex guitarist? I I, I apologise. I forgot your name. Ex guitarist of um Forest, right? I mean that's what your uh, Instagram handle is, right? Uh, Collins. Hey, JJ Music. Good. Hey, D Dog. Good to see you again. <laughs> um, did you hear the guitar in the intro there? I was trying to work it out with Guitar Pro, so. I uh, hope that came across, that you could actually hear that. <laughs> hey, Nomad, good to see you again. So, um, right. Hey, Minge, have you finally made it to a live stream? Yeah, um, so, a bit of tapping there for the intro uh, for you. So, welcome to live stream Q&A number 30. Like I said, hope everyone's doing well. Um, these are going to be set, uh, well, pretty much set, like I said, for the next next 12 or 13 weeks gonna start at 9 30 a.m which is in south korea so hopefully that's a good time for most of you uh, especially if you're in the states that's going to be the evening time for you um usually what i do for these if you're sorry if you're new to these then usually what i do is i teach a little bit something at the start and i try to set some kind of topic and then we you generally talk about that topic right so uh, today's topic um, is the riff that taught me to finger tap and um, that's the riff that I played in the intro there does anybody know what that riff is it's a pretty popular one but I'm just wondering if it's you know it's from quite a few years ago so and it's um, not really within the vein of math rock and while I'm waiting for you to answer um, yeah like I said hope everyone had a good week last week I worked my ass off to make that um, five tapping riffs, which I put a lot of effort into. I spent weeks learning some of those riffs, especially the standards one. My God, to get that at full speed, there are no cuts at all. So that's like literally me in one take on most of them. So there's some little fluffs everywhere, but you know, nothing's perfect, right? Uh, but yeah, that video bombed, unfortunately. <laughs> so I should just stick to making random video riffs. Perhaps they seem to do the best. <laughs> it is. Yeah, um, but if you haven't watched that video already, it's uh, it's up on my channel now. For some reason, YouTube just hates me when I do this kind of video, and it just doesn't show it to my audience. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed that one. All right, um, just to check, you did hear the guitar in the intro there, right? You heard me playing. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be awkward me talking about something that I actually actually didn't happen. Okay, and while I wait for this delay, um, okay, okay, yeah, excellent, thank you, thank you, Collins. Um, so, I've been working on a very funny, I recorded a very, well, I think it's funny, and I hopefully you'll find it funny, that'll be the video for, um, for this Friday. Uh, you did hear it, excellent, yeah, you didn't hear it, okay, so... Let me let me get that back up for you. So I got Guitar Pro on screen. Let's see if I can get that back up again. So here's the riff. Let me unselect that in Guitar Pro. We come back over. We can see the riff. Um, so I didn't have enough time to prepare. You know, if you watch a lot of live streamers, they just seem to have this mad scramble before they press go live. And I'm very much one of those people. So this is a song uh, called Roses for the Dead by Funeral for a Friend. Um, you may recognize 
Um, let's get this. I mean, it's kind of an apt guitar for it. I think they used PRS though back in the day. I'm not sure. Um, without those extra notes in there. But you might recognize that riff and it's the same band. Uh, so this is from a later release, I think it was called Hours. Um, so I tried to match that distorted tone. For me, I really don't like that kind of tone. Um, but the, you know, I'm unclean at the moment, but this is pretty impressive actually. I'm just gonna say it like the Riverside Drive by Strymon. You know, f from, from that to <laughs> it's pretty impressive pedal um yeah no way affiliated with strymon i just think they they sound great so um there's a lot of bass on that track as well so i used the the noodles by ground control audio to add some low end to it otherwise you've got like um this kind of sound so if you add some bass bit of low end. Ah, this cable is on its way out for sure. <laughs> and I, I guess that goes to show that humbuckers take um, distortion quite well. All right, back over here. Yeah, so I titled this one The Riff That Taught Me To Finger Tap because it pretty much was. I can't remember what year this was, to be honest, but it was going back probably 10 plus, 10 plus years. It's got to be. Mm. Maybe even more. We're probably talking about 12, almost 15 years. And um, so the why I think this is a good place to start and why I think I was attracted to it is it's um, very, all of the parts like it's very it's, uh, let me let me let me re let, let me get myself <laughs> so um, this hand your left hand it's a great two happen tan pe a two two hand tapping piece so I think this is a great place to start if you're looking to learn finger tapping and you'd want something that's not too um, too difficult to learn because Basically, this hand is playing, you know, a bunch of power chords or fifths, you know, and it's a repeating motif. So, between those three power chords, and the same goes for this hand as well. I do want to point out this that this song is in like drop C sharp, so it's actually um, everything sounds a semitone lower than what I'm playing here today. So that hand is playing that repeated motif. And you could do all of this with, um, you know, like your middle finger, then your index, middle uh, index again, and ring finger. And then in between each, now that's naturally how I play it. So I play like, Middle, middle, index, ring. Let me see if I can get that, if I zoom it in a bit more. With the magic of a lens, I'd have to adjust it. Um, and hopefully you can see what's going on there. So. I just want to deaden it there so you can hear what the you know the rhythm is of each part. So basically after every one of these there's a note in between. If you speed it up it starts to sound like a a, a terramelos riff. But yeah, please um Please take that riff away. And if you're looking for a good place to start learning two-handed tapping, this is an absolutely fantastic riff for that. I think after this riff, 
I tried to learn, um, I just got this symphony going by the fall of Troy and that felt like, um, you know, it felt like hard mode after, <laughs> after this riff. I'm, I'm not going to lie on that one. Um, so let me get that off screen. Bye bye tab. Where are you? There we go. And let's see how we're doing in the, in the chat over here. Oh, well, we've got some super chats. Thanks. Um, thanks, Gilberto. And who else we got? A tube amp cab as well. It's good to see you again, by the way. Excellent. Yeah. So if you would like that tab, uh, you can find it on the internet. However, if you would like to support this channel, uh, then if you head over to Patreon, I have a live stream support tier at the moment on Patreon. I should have probably loaded that up to show you that. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not all that professional. But if you go over to there, you'll be able to get that tab as well as a download. And also if you become a patron anyway, you get like all of the tabs that I use in my videos. And like um, if I use any chords, you get like PDFs of chord charts and stuff like that. And also we have a, a Discord as well, a Discord server, um, which is usually, you know, there's a lot of us in there. We chat and you can ask any questions in there. Friendly bunch in that one. All right, so um, let's have a look what we got then. So today's theme, you can ask any questions, of course, but if you want to direct it towards, um, you know, riffs that you think are great for learning finger tapping, it's more than, appreciate, more than appreciated. Remember, you can help each other out, so you can feel free to talk to each other. I want this to be, you know, a friendly uh, place for us all. Okay, so going back up. Uh, right, so woke up dead. They said, hope you're well. I'm, do I'm doing fine, thanks. Really well, actually, today. It's Monday ready to tackle the week. Um, you haven't been watching much YouTube later. Maybe that will change for you soon. Uh, I, f I find I go through that as well. Like I'll watch, you know, it's just phases, isn't it? Um, all right, Ispring, good to see you. Who else we got? Um, this is a, 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 a P, P Paul studio, <laughs> a Les Paul studio. Yeah, this is a studio, Studio Pro from 2014 it looks like it's ebony um, i've said many times though it's like this rainbow uh, finish it's like black black finish and then on top of it is like metallic like sparkle so it's like looks like um if you get it under certain lights it looks like rainbow and um to me i like it because it looks like when you look at space um you know some pictures of space it looks like that under certain angles but yeah Really enjoying this guitar. All right, um, carrying on. Yeah, so we're, we're using the Les Paul today. That's what we're going with. But I have got my new uh, guitar back there that, uh, you know, last night I spent about an hour trying to write this riff and I could play it well last night, but I guarantee you if I try and play it now, it it, it, it won't go that well. <laughs> but we, we can have a, perhaps we'll get to that in a little bit. I'll keep my hand warmed up perhaps. Um, carrying on. All right, good to see you again, Herbert. Hope you're doing well. Uh, JJ Music asked to play it again. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I did. Sorry, I'm 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 back in the history of the uh, the chat here. Lucas, they said um, I want a good amp so bad, but I just can't afford one. I have a Fender Telecaster Thinline. Okay, Thinline Telecaster, very nice. Um, you can get a decent amp for 150. That um, the reason I don't get rid of that Pathfinder over there. That's a solid state Vox amp. It's the 15 watt one, but you can get a 10 watt version. Um, Path Pathfinder. That's what it's called. Yeah, that has got to be less than 150, I guess. And to me, that amp sounds great. If you watch um, JHS channel, they have an episode called Solid Solid State Amps Suck. And the first amp in that video is that exact amp there. And it sounds wonderful. Like it's a really good amplifier. Again, not sponsored by Vox. <laughs> it just genuinely, I think it's a good amp and that's why I've had it for so long. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, carrying on. So where were we? Matthew, you made it, good to see you. Right. I call it, I like this Collins. Um, it, it sounds a lot like the intro to you know De Gausser by Brand New. Um, I guess it does in some ways, right? <laughs> um, I don't think that is the exact chord progression, but it's definitely got that. Yeah. 
don't know. Yeah. That's that's a that's a great riff though for that song. Um okay. Lucas is muted taps the same as palm muting? I can't figure it out. Oh wait, yeah, you you know, you're using your palm to mute it. Mute it, sorry, so I'd say so. Um alright, uh blueprints for headaches, they are still off for guitar lessons. Uh not at the moment. I, I was doing, you know, probably a year ago. Uh, I just can't fit it into my life at the moment now. If I did guitar lessons, then I would have no time to make content for this channel. Um, you know, I work full, a full-time job. You know, I have a family and I do YouTube as well. So you can imagine my time is quite limited to put to this. But this is the thing that I, I enjoy enjoy doing is making content and playing guitar, those kind of things. Um, in the future, if I did take this channel full time, you know, I'd have to make a revenue to obviously replace my job, which is still quite quite a far bit away at the moment. Uh, but at that time, I would do guitar lessons to obviously make up that, that extra income. And, you know, I get asked every week as well. So I think there's a good demand for it. So I would be happy to do that again. And I do, yeah, as much as I love my job now, I, I, I like teaching guitar more, so <laughs> I think that's uh, that makes sense, right? So it, once if I do make that jump, you know I'll let I'll let you know about that. But thanks for the interest. Um, okay, yeah, Matthew reminds me of Silverstein. Yeah, again, you know we're talking funeral for a friend, very similar style of music, so yeah, similar similar period as well, right? Okay, Les Paul. <laughs> what a life. Um, Sydney, Kim, they uh, they said, uh, Vox versus Phoneram. What is your taste? To me, um, so the Vox is very like mid range, not a lot of low end, very chimey sounding. It works better for certain guitars, better, pe you know, certain pedals. I find that, you know, I'm very, I'm generalizing here, of course. Uh, Fender amps, in my experience, have a lot more low end to them. They're very mid scooped. So they work, you know, for certain guitars. Like, I don't feel like a Les Paul f works very well for me with that style amp. But the thing is, I, I, I'm i using this um, Rev. There's a D, yeah, Rev D20 lunchbox head that's here. And that's going directly out if you know if you're familiar with like the two notes torpedo software so it makes it sound like a recorded guitar you know like a mic on a cab so i'm not sure what amp that is based on but i like the sound of it it just sits well i just set it flat and i, I do everything with um my guitars and also that has like um you know virtual cabinet selector switch on the front so i can have up to six so i can flick between those so basically i have a preset made for each one of these guitars so if I plug into a different guitar I'll flick over to that and obviously balancing out the levels is really great for that because these obviously are higher output than some other guitars uh, like the YY10 the Yvette Young guitar the single cores and that are much higher output than what's in the Mustang so that helps for that otherwise you're running into that headache of having to adjust every time you know you change uh, change guitar so it's, it's wonderful for that um, but as a preference for me I did have the, the um, you know the Iridium by Strymon that had the, those th three main style of amplifiers in it, Fender, the Vox, and the Marshall style. And I found I always used the Fender style one on that one. If I was just looking for a really nice, um, like, kind of bright, chimey, clean sound, then I would switch over to that Vox one. But I guess that means I prefer the sound of the Fender one. But nothing wrong with the Vox one to be honest and yeah I, I think you can go you'd be fine either way with either style of those amps all right uh yeah blueprints busy busy but you know it's enjoyment right it keeps you busy it keeps it gets it gives you something to do in your life right so i'm, I'm happy to do this and, and no problem as well okay um i'm a Rusi, uh, as a beginner math as a beginner in math i was wondering if you have any advice for new players maybe thank you again for your content it's been very helpful oh thanks thank you and thanks for the question uh, for that um you know it, i always have like kind of the same answer good place to start I, i'm not sure I, beginner of math rock i'm not sure if that means you're also a beginner at guitar if you're a beginner at guitar it's important to get those fundamental things down first you know learning um you know strumming patterns learning some chords, learning some chord progressions, 
learning alternate picking, that's super important, then looking at legato. But if you're past all that stage already, then I always recommend like um, learning some of the stuff that you enjoy listening to. Try to find stuff that's quite easy. And even if you have to spend a while and it takes you a while just to get like a simple riff down, you know, you can see the, you know, it feels like an achievement once you get that down and you learn lots, lots from that. Um, thinking back to when I started, you know, I was very much into like, is like Nirvana, Foo Fighters, like kind of like punk rock music as well, uh, pop punk as well. So I was just learning those chord progressions and stuff. And then I didn't really think about technique too much until I started, like when I went to college uh, to learn guitar. Um, but I think I picked up stuff through learning those songs anyway. So if, but going back to, going back to math rock, if you've got past those, that initial stage of techniques that you're learning, then you want to start looking at finger tapping. Um, if you don't like finger tapping, you don't have to use it. That's completely fine. However, give it a try, see if you enjoy it. Then it's going to be things like hybrid picking. If you want to go into that more progressive style of playing, uh, progressive like meets math rock, hybrid picking is going to be very useful for that. And if you're looking to go more into that Tim Collis, Yvette Young, um, finger style of playing, then you got to ditch the pick and then just use your fingers in instead. And yeah, it, it, for example, if I was going to learn like uh, this Taiwanese gun song, I'd probably start with a song like Crocodile. Like I have a tab for that. There's a video on it on my page because that's fairly easy to play and you could learn a lot just from learning that. Other things you can do, of course, are those boring exercises. Practice those. Also use those exercises of warming up. Those are going to help you too. Like whenever I warm up, um, like I have this, um, this, this I put in the book as a tapping exercise too, but. Let's take that low end off. There we go. So it's like this shape that, um, inverts on itself and it's, it's it puts um you know a good stretch on your hands so i find that's a good way to warm up for like doing chordal kind of stuff and that's like a you know a guitar teacher who was obsessed with uh, metal and stuff told me that was a john Petrucci uh <laughs> warm-up exercise kind of thing and the other thing i'll do is just chromatically is walk up like this do various different picking patterns with that as well. I mean, I'm warmed up now, but you know, I wouldn't recommend going that fast. So that I would warm up for alternate picking, for finger picking. You know, I'd use a, something like that. And that doubles up as an exercise or two, uh, as well, of course. And then for finger tapping, I'd do the same thing, but I'd start on the fifth fret. And I've done this on like a short video, uh, but this is also a good exercise. It's walking up chromatically with your fingers. And when you get to here, ninth fret, carry on with your index. And you'll find that your little finger is weak. It is in my regard, so I like to place my, uh, my ring finger on top of it to give it some strength. <laughs> Otherwise it feels really awkward. Yeah, and then you, you can just walk up the, the strings that way. That I like those kind of exercises because they double up as, well, they're exercises, but they also work really well for, um, for warm up as well. Yeah. Um, I think I went off on a bit of a tangent, but hopefully there was something in the ethos there that you could use. And if you want some kind of um, structure to it, if you go to my website, you'll find a link on some of my videos, but it's just like, let's talk about mathrock.com. I have like beginner lessons and like intermediate lessons. So you can just go through there and see what you know sticks out to you, which ones you want to try. All right, carrying on, what have we got? Uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, thanks for the question. I, ho I hope that helped you out. 
Oh yeah, Shao Long. Um, do you think that there's a place for chugs in Mathrock? Um, yeah, of course there is. You could use it very creatively. You could um, put it. A lot of older star stuff would have it. Um, it's hard to like put into words, but like I, I, when 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 I used to make Mathrock in the past, it was to me I approached it as, and I still do sometimes. Well, a lot of the time still, actually. I have individual ideas and I stick them together. And sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's very abrupt. And I think, like, you could imagine, like, a tapping part that suddenly goes to, like, this chugging part. Um, I'm thinking, like, if you go back to, like, the some of the earlier, like, uh, Terra Melos stuff, there's a lot of that. Also with, um, like, giraffe giraffes, like, um, you know, super bass EP there's a lot of shifting, like sudden dynamic changes. But the one that I think that stands out the most is probably going to be a band called You Slut. And um, I forget the name of the record now. Critical Critical Meat. <laughs> Check out that one because there is chugging stuff on there. And again, it's very abrupt changes and stuff. But it's a wonderful, wonderful record that one is. So there's definitely place for it. All right, carrying on. Um, so, but... Yeah, definitely place for it, I would say. Hey, Socks, the Socks 9. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Uh, or good evening. I don't, I, or good afternoon. I don't know. You know, just hope you're well. I believe so I am. Love the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Herbert says um, to, in re response to Chow, like, I'm not sure if chugs exist, but, you know, breakdowns definitely exist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess that does happen sometimes, right? Okay, I believe so I am. What happened to the Math or Christmas video? Um, I take it down because it's not really relevant during the, the rest of the year. So it's not. It's still there. I think it's unlisted. Um, however, it's very likely that I'll make another one this year and I'll try and up, up the ante, so to speak. I'll try and make it even more um, <laughs> whatever it is, yeah, uh, compared to the last one. I, however, I have written on a, on, a, on a paper here. It says, Teach Santa Claus is coming to town. Two-handed tapping riff uh, for Christmas live stream. So I will be teaching that one in one of the live streams. So um, I look forward to that one. Uh, Tube Amp Cat, um, I guess, you know, you're a fan of amps. Y you said your favorite amp is the Fender EH5 5153. <laughs> I think you're... Uh, Think you're trolling me there, right? <laughs> that would be um, the PV amp, right? Okay. Again, I know lots about guitars. Really don't know that much about amps, and I probably don't know that much about guitars compared to someone who knows a lot more than me about guitars. Okay. Uh, Smooth caramel. Okay. Uh, hey Steve, just started watching your channel this week and listening to you and your band stuff. All right. Thank you. This is fantastic. Yeah. There's a lot of back catalogue, um, there's a lot of good videos, but there's also a lot of terrible videos in there. So you're going to have to sift through. I do have playlists on my YouTube channel, so you can go through those and find out what works for you. Um, thanks for listening to the band stuff. On the, on the subject of that actual mountains, I said that we are working on our next album. Um, I said that Joel had moved to Mexico and this week actually he sent some, uh, we, Ali and I recorded backing tracks to a click and we sent them over to him and he started sending some drum tracks back to us, so exciting stuff to come. So hopefully sometime next year we'll have something out and um, yeah, you know, we haven't done anything since 2019 so I'm, I'm very excited to do that. We're going to take our time with this one. He's going to record the drums there in Mexico, send them over here and uh I'm going to record Ali here in this studio setup that I got. And then I'm going to take my time doing guitars and the vocals are going to take the longest, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, I'm not going to record those in my car like I did for my EP. I'm going to go to a proper studio for that one because uh, I learned that's not probably the most sensible thing to do. I, I was very in, I was thinking when I made that EP, I was very inspired by Slint. I was like, they recorded vocals in the car. I would do the same thing. However, his vocals are spoken stuff, whereas I was pretty much belting it all of the time. So um, even though it did not peak, it sounds very distorted in places. Uh, yeah. Okay. Carrying on down. What have we got? Uh, who have we got? 
<laughs> we will tube amp cuts so long. Okay, it, it jumps from time to time. So I'll, I'll, I'll find if I miss some things. So apologies. If you if you want to get my attention, if you really want me to answer a question, then uh, there's always the the super chat option. But you know, I don't want to force you to do that. And speaking of that, thanks thanks for the support there, Jonathan. Uh, that's that's really nice of you. Um, okay. Carrying on down, inverted chords, so Blueprint says inverted chords be the best, but hard to sing over. Um, yeah, I, I haven't actually, you know, I do use them from time to time, but that's something I've never really thought about. I'll, I'll give that a try. Uh, Leo, Leo Regan, greetings and thank you for your channel. Thanks. The blue guitar on the back reminds me of Polini intervals. Yeah, it's because it's like um, the whole headless, headless thing, isn't it? It makes me try to play that way, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, okay, Lucas said so you've been playing a year and a half. Okay, less than a year and a half. So you should be getting past that, you know, that beginner stage. So you, you should have some things under your belt now. So realistically, make make um, a plan of what, what it is you want to achieve and think of ways that you can get there. But make your goals realistic. You don't want to set yourself up for, for failure in that regard. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chow. Colin, uh, Collins... Yeah, okay. The chromatic exercises really sped up my fingers and doing them now. Excellent, yeah. It was like the three different shapes. So there's one where you just walk up chromatically. There's one where you do your index, ring, middle, little finger. And the last one was index, um, little finger, middle, ring. It's much easier just to do them legato in that regard. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so Tube Amp Cat, they said, yeah, Polini plays Strandbergs, that would be why. Okay, Lucas, you learned the standards riff in 20 minutes. Okay, well, you must be good then. <laughs> that that Kale and Strawberries was driving me mad trying to get that to full speed. And then I was thinking, like, Marcus does that live, which is probably even quicker. <laughs> um... Uh, my cat just fell off the chair. Right, and I guess you want to get out again. So prepare for, you'll see a cat walking past here in a second. Um, Spoon, good question. Do you plan, yeah, what's up? Come on. Um, do you plan on buying a new telly soon? Um, I don't know, I think I have enough guitars. What does everyone think? You know, I've got five or six of them at the moment. It's, it's hard to play all of them. <laughs> You're probably going to tell me to buy one, aren't you? Um, but I would like a telly with a maple neck because I don't have a telly with a maple neck. Yeah, just kidding. Um, Henry Marks, favorite chord? It's gonna be the old, uh, we'll play it with an E. E major nine. Smooth, yeah probably my favorite chord if I, if I had to choose one right now yeah um okay again i need to remember to turn that down otherwise you're getting constantly right <clears throat> okay luke uh, you you asked a similar question to the person earlier beginner at math rock do you got any tips just what i said if you if you were here at that time um okay v -v 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 carrying on Carrying on, what are we going? I feel like math rock is used a lot of other genres now. Yeah, um, blueprints. It, it kind of. I think a great place to to notice this. If you if you go to like the Fecking Bahamas website, they have a history of math, and when you read that, you can start to see how it's like started a, with this amalgamation of like other styles, because math rock itself came from that, and then and now it's branched off into many different. You know, it's, it's been borrowed by many other styles of music which naturally happens right you know that's the way innovation keeps happening with music so make things new and interesting so that's definitely definitely true apologies about the phone let's put that on the floor okay okay yeah uh tube amp cat got back to about that evh one yeah about the amp all right 
Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, Nuriel, this is a good question. Yes, Steve, what, hap what happened to the band introduction series? Nobody sending new stuff. Um, I did, the last one I did was with Nurture Nurture. I think that was the one, and they're really good. I, I wanted just to really help them out. Um, I've been thinking of doing one for the, you know, the new standards uh, EP that's coming out. So I'm thinking of reaching out to Marcus and asking if he wants to do for that. Um, I just haven't really been promoting it, so no one's been really sending me anything. But, um... Yeah, I'm not sure if we want to continue doing that one. It takes a lot of work, but, uh, you know, I do have, like, a space in there every so often that I could get that kind of video. And if people enjoy them, then it'd be something I definitely would uh, would continue to do. Okay, uh, Nihilist, Nihilist, I guess, yeah. They ask, what are your thoughts on shell voicings? It's my, you know, I was using them all the time when I learned them because of the Fall of Troy. I didn't know that's what they were called for, for years. Uh, where you're just like playing the, you know, the, the essential notes in the chord, like the one, the three, and the seven in this regard, for like a minor seven, um, a major seven, or you could play it um, like that, but that would be the fifth instead of the third. They're wonderful chords, and they, they work ever so well, um, you know, uh, playing, uh, dancing with my pedals down here. Um, they're kind of like a... Um, an alternative an alternative to power chords that's the way I look at them and they they just have a bit more of um because of that tension in there you know power chords sound very straight very uh, you know example example um, so like let's say like an A power chord versus a you know, that has a bit more a bit more um, emotion to it right then you got your sus chord, which I learned from Coheed. <laughs> which is another really excellent alternative to a power chord. So you just play the power chord, but move the octave up to the ninth, the second. I use those all the time. Um, any uh, prize fighter fans in the house <laughs> again sounds lovely for that kind of thing all right then so uh, i got 10 minutes and i need to shoot because i got my first class uh, for the day there's some great questions here and i'm hoping everyone's enjoying this um so let's carry on i digress okay we did the introduction series we were carrying on um okay trico trico good Uh, 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 okay, you got Kerberb. Kerberb. I'm comfortable with techniques, playing guitar and playing math rock, but when it comes to writing music, I suck. <laughs> I think everyone feels that way. I, I certainly do. Um, I'm okay at needling, but whenever I gotta write uh, it down, I don't know what to do. Tips. So, um, 
I would recommend learning some chord progressions, Karibib, and then basing the stuff that you already know, the techniques around that chord progression. Uh, I think you're just missing that essential harmony part there. Um, if you want it to sound more mathy, then start with like a standard, you know, chord progression. Um, like, I, I'm, no, let me uh, bring it up. Um, so let's say like you had D major. So one, four, six, uh, four, five. So that's like a really common chord progression. And then, you know, try to math that one up a bit more uh, and then start like adding some chords that are not really in there. You know, like so if we went D to G. It's, it's, everything sounds jazz on this, right? But there would be using that, give yourself a framework is what I'm saying there, like a foundation which to build something upon. Take that chord progression, take chords out, throw new chords in there and put your noodling that you know in between there. That I believe would be a good place to start. Also learning other people's ideas is also a great way as well. So I hope that helps you out. Um, ah, I believe so I am. Offset telly. Yeah, you're right. I could get another telly because it wouldn't be technically a telecaster. So that would work, right? <laughs> and... Um, uh, curriculus, um, I have a maple neck for a telly with a, without a telly. <laughs> okay, is that the offset telly one? <laughs> all right, I'll let you out soon, all right? I'm finished in a minute. All right, Kitty, yeah, cat's gone. She's coming back now to meow at me again. All right, um, smooth caramel, the guitar I'm hand at the moment. It's, um, it's, a, very, it's a very nice guitar. Very, this is probably the easiest guitar I have to play, I'm not going to lie. And it, it sounds wonderful, but um, like I said, I like Gibson stuff, I like their guitars, but I'm not so much fan of the company, uh, so I tend not to really you know, pr promote it so much in that regard. Okay, oh, uh, carrying on down. Um, yeah, it's got very nice, like, rounded sound to it, I do like that. Yeah, Matthew Prizefighter need another record? Yeah, I guess so. Hi, uh, Collins, thanks. That's very generous of you. Really appreciate. Um, just a genuine thanks for your videos and teaching style single handedly brought me out of a seemingly endless guitar slump. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, best guitar YouTuber. I, w I wouldn't say that, but I really appreciate that, uh, Collins. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, really generous and cool, like Shao said, yeah. Um, okay, uh, was it Curriculos? Um, I love the shorts. First Teddy watching the channel. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you talking about the shorts I wear or are we talking about YouTube shorts? I'm confused. Uh, Lucky, string gauge, use whatever's comfortable for you. I don't want it to be more work than it has to be. I tend to use nines or tens, depending on the guitar. Like, I, I, you know, I'll put tens on this. This has tens, really easy to play still. Telecaster has to have nines on it for me. But if you're tapping and you're bending notes sharp, um, if, you, if the notes are becoming sharp, then I would recommend upping to the next gauge of strings. If you're finding it really hard to bend, then that's a good sign that you need to drop a gauge, okay? You can obviously get used to it, but to me, like, it just seems more work than it has to be a lot of the time. If you, the more that you play guitar, if you're playing every single day, then I find that perhaps over time, then you could probably go up a gauge because the, the gauge that you're currently using might feel a bit uh, loose in that regard, a bit too, um, you know, if you're bending stuff when you fret, you know, for example, um, let's bring that back up again. So, when I fret a note, if it's sounding like this, you know, that's sharp, right? If it's sounding sharp, then, you know, if you're gripping quite hard, then try a higher gauge of strings. digress again uh, so um yep okay so that was the string gauge question i hope that helped you out lucky uh, just don't don't 
fret over it too much. It's important to learn some stuff that uh, uses finger tapping. Okay, uh, Donovan, despite being a drummer, a lot of what you do inspires me. Oh, thank you very much. That's great to know. Um, yeah, excellent stuff. All right. Uh, <laughs> haven't changed your strings in two years, but went from 10s to 12s. Uh, do not recommend. <laughs> okay. Um, carrying on. Someone says uh, De Trevor Wong. I'm not I'm sure what that regards to. Uh, Blueprints, yes, fan of Gibson. I really like the guitars. Just you know, all of the all of the stuff they do as a, as a company, like they're you know, bullying other companies and uh, all those lawsuits and stuff like that. You know, I don't like to get into that kind of thing, but I think they make fantastic guitars. That's for sure. Uh, okay, you can go to nine point fives, that that point five of a millimeter before going to tens. Yeah, you could do that. I haven't tried those that style of strings, but yeah, that could work. Um, I haven't changed the strings on your classical guitar in three years. That happens. <laughs> uh, Red, hey, yeah, you just made it when it's time to finish. All right, then. I got to go and get ready for a class, and I really need to let, let my cat out as well. It's not, not fair for her. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you out in a second. Yep, okay. Um, all right, you want to say hi to? <laughs> I'm not sure if yeah, you can see her down there, right? All right, everyone. Thanks for joining today. These are going to be 50 minutes long because I start a class in 10 minutes. So uh, thanks for everyone that joined today. Thanks for all the questions. Um, the video, I'll have a video out this Friday. There might be one midweek. It depends if I get creative in, in the week. And um, the one this Friday, hopefully you'll, you'll find it funny. So thanks for the support, everyone. If you want to support the channel, you know, I have merchandise, Patreon, all that kind of thing. Really, I really appreciate it. All right. Have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you all next Monday. Okay. Goodbye.